so so yeah great so this is this is the passage folks um let's us now uh, if you're if you're looking at the pdf uh, finish reading it and then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to discuss this together okay great now how did you guys how did you guys find the passage can i get some responses on the chat just what has what was your experience when you read this passage uh did you find it simple did you find it complex what's your impression of the passage complex okay all right jitesh that's absolutely fine interesting amazing quite easy okay all right so i'm seeing varying opinions which is which is great now just one thing before we start discussing see if if you are seeing a cat passage for the first time if you're reading or solving a cat passage for the first time you most likely you will find it complex okay and that's simply because you don't have practice okay so don't worry about that even if you're finding this uh, passage complex or difficult to read it's absolutely fine don't worry about it okay that's because you haven't seen it or your reading skills have not are not up to the mark right now which is absolutely fine you have about five and a half, half months so you can always build your reading skills and you will see that once you start reading regularly you know passages like these will become easier to understand so my point is don't worry if you found this complex anyway we're going to discuss it and read it together okay so let's do that all right now what we're going to do is we're going to read this passage together and one tip that i can give you is so i always tell my students this and i'm going to repeat that thing in, pro in probably every session please read every passage with a lot of interest curiosity and be an active reader okay so show show energy exhibit a lot of energy when you're reading this passage and read it with a lot of interest and curiosity now that's because the moment you do that your comprehension will increase right this might si sound like a absurd tip but believe me it works so just tell your mind before beginning the passage that you're going to read it with a lot of curiosity interest and energy you need to be an active reader okay that will help you in comprehension so that's one and maintain that momentum throughout and second is what we're going to do is which i would suggest you should try as well it's also a great tip if you want to increase your comprehension what you can do is after reading every paragraph you can make a small note okay it has to be a very small note it doesn't have to be full sentences and we take the note primarily to increase our comprehension simply because you've read the paragraph and what you need to do is you need to summarize the main idea of the paragraph in a quick note the moment you write it down it will register in your brain so primarily we are doing this to increase comprehension so you'll see me doing that uh, right now with every paragraph i would suggest you can do it simultaneously so if you have a notepad with you just type the type a note for every paragraph what is the main idea of the paragraph is what you need to summarize in a very quick sentence not long sentences okay let's get started all right what does it say the word anarchy comes from the greek anarchia meaning contrary to authority or without a ruler and was used in derogatory sense until 1840 when it was adopted by peer joseph prudhon to describe his political and social ideology okay all right so it introduces the term anarchy right what does it say it says that um the word anarchy it explains to you the meaning right it it says meaning contrary to authority or without a ruler so even if you don't know the meaning of anarchy you can understand it from this sentence it just means somebody anarchy is going against the authority or not having a ruler at all that's what the passage is that's what the sentence is saying it was used in a derogatory sense until 1840 so till 1840 which is a long time ago it was used in a derogatory sense derogatory sense means negative sense right derogatory is is negative so it was used in a negative sense till you had peer joseph prudhon coming in and he changed the whole sense from derogatory to positive because he used it to describe his political and social ideology right okay so that's what the sentence says prudhon argued that organization without government was both possible and desirable that's how he changed it to from negative to positive because he said that you can have organization without government it's not only possible but desirable as well that's the positive aspect so you see the shift from negative to positive in the evolution of political ideas anarchism can be seen as an ultimate projection of both liberalism and socialism okay and the differing strands of anarchist thought can be related to their emphasis on one or the other of these okay so what they're saying is that um one prudhon changed it from negative to positive right that was his job they what and it also explains to you that anarchism is related to liberalism and socialism 
okay because it says differing strands of anarchist thought can be related to the emphasis on either one of them so basically what they're saying is anarchism borrows from both liberalism and socialism so different parts of anarchism different thoughts it borrows from either liberalism or socialism is what the passage is saying a uh, paragraph is saying okay all right now let's try to summarize this um, main idea of the paragraph in a quick quick note and and this is what i was telling you this will help you in comprehension so what is this paragraph saying ask yourself what is the main idea one is of course it introduces anarchy right the meaning and everything it talks about prudhon okay which changed the sense from negative to positive because it was used in a derogatory sense he changed it because he said it's not only possible but desirable as well and it also talks about anarchism being related to two things borrowing from liberalism and borrowing from socialism as well if you were to talk about the main idea these are the main points in the paragraph okay so you can make a quick note here you just have to scribble it the moment you write it down it registers in your brain okay all right let's move on historically anarchism arose okay historically so it's going to talk about what what happened before uh, why did it arise and stuff like that historically anarchism arose not only as an explanation of the gulf between the rich and the poor okay in any community and of the reason why the poor have been obliged to fight for their share of common inheritance okay so it's saying that anarchism arose not only because of this reason so one reason is gulf between the rich and the poor so gulf means a big difference that's what gulf means here big difference between the rich and the poor and the rich and the poor in any community usually have a big difference okay so this is not the only reason for anarchism coming to be okay but there is another reason as a radical answer to the question what went wrong that followed the ultimate outcome of the french revolution now take up take a, take a few seconds to understand what this paragraph is saying it's telling you why anarchism arose or why anarchism you know what sort of uh, was given birth it sort of started somewhere right so why did it start so it's saying it's not only because of the difference between the rich and the poor and the gulf between the rich and the poor so obviously when there is a huge difference between the rich and the poor the poor can get angry right because they are not getting the resources that rich is getting so then that can lead to anarchy but that's not the only reason the other reason is which is a radical answer a radical is something which is very major and totally different another reason is it it arose as a radical answer to the question what went wrong that followed the ultimate outcome of the french revolution so the clearly the french revolution's outcome was not what they expected french revolution happened they expected a certain outcome the outcome was totally different and it was negative outcome so the question started they started asking the question what went wrong with french revolution and in answering the question anarchism came up okay so there are two reasons here if you were to just quickly summarize right it's talking about anarchism the reason why it started so not only the difference between rich and poor okay but that is a reason but that's not the only reason it's also the second reason is the negative outcome of french revolution they didn't have a good outcome they didn't have the outcome that they expected they had a negative outcome and because of that negative outcome anarchism came into being okay let's see if the passage further explains this but that's the main idea till now let's proceed it had ended not only with the reign of terror and the emergence of a newly rich ruling class now when they say it they're talking about the french revolution okay you can you can see it from the you can connect it to the previous part so french revolution had ended not only with the reign of terror and the emergence of a newly rich ruling caste but with a new adored emperor napoleon bonaparte strutting through his conquered territories okay now think about this you have a french revolution what is a revolution a revolution is a people uprising okay so what people get frustrated people get angry because of whatever reasons and what they do is they target the government they go against the government or they go against their rulers that is what a revolution is so when people are fighting for something okay they expect a positive outcome out of that revolution because any revolution is not easy right there's a lot at stake in a revolution right a lot of damage happens so they do that revolution they come together they expect a positive outcome but unfortunately what the passage is saying is with the french revolution it ended not only with the reign of terror but the emergence of a newly rich ruling caste there was a rich and poor the poor were revolutionizing 
they did all of this and they ended up with a with terror and another rich ruling caste so what what happened something went wrong they didn't expect that that wasn't a po positive outcome and not only that they also had another ruler napoleon bonaparte strutting through his conquered territories so clearly the french revolution went wrong which rose which gave rise to anarchism anarchism okay all right let's proceed the anarchists and the precursors were unique on the political left in affirming so precursors means pre is something that comes before so you have anarchists of obviously you had something before anarchists so they're talking about not only anarchists but the sort of like the category of people before anarchists so precursors is pre anarch pre anarchism okay so the anarchists and the precursors were unique on the political left in affirming affirming is nothing but declaring okay declaring that workers and peasants grasping the chance that arose to bring an end to centuries of exploitation and tyranny were inevitably betrayed by the new class of politicians whose first priority was to reestablish a centralized state power okay so there's a lot to unpack in this sentence so see the previous paragraph has already told you that the french revolution went wrong and that gave gave rise to anarchism so what this paragraph is doing is it's further explaining that idea to you so what they what it's saying is that anarchists and their precursors basically declared that the workers and peasants right who were involved in the revolution th these are the people who caused the revolution the poor folks right against the rich and their rulers they took a chance that presented themselves after centuries a revolution is not something that happens again and again it happens once in in decades once in centuries after a lot of struggle so these workers and peasants after a lot of struggles took a chance they grasped the chance right to escape exploitation and tyranny but they were inevitably betrayed by the new class of politicians because the new class of politicians that came up after the revolution their first priority was to reestablish a centralized state of power so they got rid of their existing rulers but in return they got a new class of politicians and the new class of politicians were focusing on power they were not focusing on the poor people so that's why the anarchists said that the poor people felt betrayed obviously right i mean you do a revolution you get together you do a revolution lives get lost right property gets lost there's so much of damage and in the end you go back to what you were before the revolution again a new class of politicians again focusing on power not focusing on the poor right so they were clearly not happy they felt betrayed the people in the revolution felt betrayed okay all right after every revolutionary uprising usually one at a heavy cost for ordinary populations see it, it mentions that and it's it's bound to happen after every revolution which is one at a heavy cost of the ordinary population or the poor population the new rulers had no hesitation in applying violence and terror secret police and a professional army to maintain the control these poor people fought they got instead what happens is a new class of politicians came in and they started applying violence and terror to maintain control to these people so obviously the people felt betrayed okay so if you look at the main idea of this paragraph what it says is that the anarchists okay they affirmed so they basically declared okay that the poor people were betrayed or felt betrayed okay by the new rulers and this is again talking about the french revolution so it's obviously you know it's it's not something which is it's pretty serious right they felt betrayed and that gave rise to anarchism okay let's proceed now for anarchists the state itself is the enemy okay all right and they have applied the same interpretation to the outcome of every revolution of the 19th and 20th centuries so it's not only just french revolution anarchists have applied the same interpretation to every revolution so what they're basically saying is all the revolutions in the 19th and 20th century had a negative outcome okay and as a result for anarchists the state itself is the enemy the rulers the politician itself is considered anarchists consider them as a the enemy because if you remember the definition definition of anarchy was without a ruler right so for them the state itself is the enemy that's why they don't want a ruler okay this is not merely because every state keeps a watchful and sometimes punitive eye on its dissidents but because every state protects the privileges privileges of the powerful 
So basically, the, the paragraph is saying anarchists consider state as the enemy. Why do they consider them as an enemy? There are two reasons. Not because the state keeps a watchful and sometimes punitive eye on its dissidents. Dissidents are people that go against something. That are protesting. So here you have these poor folks who are going against the state. So those are dissidents. Punitive eye means if, if let's say the state is keeping a punitive eye on its dissidents, that means the state is punishing its dissidents. Punitive is connected to punishment. So that is not the only reason. Right. That is not that is not why anarchists consider state itself as a enemy. That's one reason. But also because every state protects the privileges of the powerful. That is also a problem that anarchists have against the state. So one is that the state keeps a watchful and punitive eye on its dissidents. Second is the state protects the privileges of the powerful and ignores the poor. That is the problem that anarchists have with the state. And that's why for them, state itself is the enemy. OK, so let's make a quick note here. So basically what we are saying is anarchists, for anarchists, state is the enemy, <coughs> right? And of course, there are two reasons which you can, which you can see. Okay, let's proceed. The mainstream of anarchist propaganda for more than a century has been anarchist communism. Okay, so now they're bringing in forms of anarchism. Okay, so they're saying the mainstream of anarchist propaganda. So the mainly anarchism was about anarchist communism. So they're bringing in sort of a type of anarchism or a, or a version of anarchism, right? Anarchism is a philosophy. It can have different versions. So one of them is anarchist communism. So what does it say? Anarchist communism, which argues that property in land, natural resources and the means of production should be held in mutual control by local communities. So what anarchist communism says is that these, 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 these aspects, land, natural resources, and the means of production should be held in mutual control by local communities. So you shouldn't have a central authority owning this, but this should be owned by communities. So again, the people, right? So people getting together form different communities. The community should own this is what anarchist communism says. Remember, anarchism is against the state. Right. So they don't obviously want the state to own this. They want the people to own this. So communism says communism, community, they want communities to own this. OK, federating for innumerable joint purposes with other communes. OK, so even if you don't know the meaning of federating, you can from the context, you can understand what they're saying is let these resources owned by communities and they will interact with other communities. They'll work in tandem. They'll collaborate. All these different communities will collaborate with each other and they'll help each other is what they're saying. OK, it differs from state socialism in opposing the concept of any central authority. Now, what does this mean? See, we already know that anarchism is against the state. State is the enemy. OK, it clearly says it differs from state socialism. So state socialism is another philosophy. Right. So anarchist communism is different from state socialism because anarchist communism opposes the concept of any central authority. OK, now from this statement, you can infer that state socialism is OK with central authority. Anarchist communism is not OK with central authority. And that's why they differ. Right. So read that sentence carefully. You should be able to make this inference here. Right. It's saying it's different. And why is it different? Because anar uh, anarchist communism opposes the concept. So obviously state socialism is okay with the concept of central authority. Right? Okay. So this paragraph is talking about anarchist communism, which is a form of, um, uh, uh, most likely a form of anarchism. Right? So it talks about what anarchist uh, communist says. It's talking about community control. And it also gives you the difference with state socialism. So there are two main points here. Do you know what, what is anarchist communism all about? It's all about communities, but it differs from state socialism because state socialism is okay with central authority. Anarchist communism is not, obviously, because state is the enemy. Right? Pretty interesting. Let's proceed. This is the last, this is the last part. Some anarchists prefer to distinguish between anarchist communism and collectivist anarchism. Okay, interesting. So now we had anarchist communism as one type of anarchism. Now we have something called as collectivist anarchism. OK, so some anarchists prefer to distinguish. They say, OK, anarchist communism is different from collectivist anarchism. This happens, right? You have a philosophy and there's a philosophy sort of, uh, you know, spreads among people. You will keep you will keep having different versions, right? It happens with religion as well, 
right? You see religion also within a religion also you have different different groups. So it happens with philosophy. It's typical. Now, why do they distinguish? In order to stress the obviously desirable freedom of an individual or family to possess the resources needed for living, while not implying the right to own the resources needed by others. Now, remember what is anarchist communism telling you? Anarchist communism says community should own these resources, right? Collectivist anarchism says it's okay for an individual or family to possess the resources needed for living. An individual family needs the resources. It's okay for them to possess it. But it doesn't mean that they should own the resources needed by others. Only own what you need and let others own what they need. So this is where the difference between communism and collectivist anarchism comes. So you were talking about, you can say, you know, if you want to take a note, you can say AC and CA. If you can remember the, you don't have to write full sentences. AC talks about communities. Okay. CA talks about individuals. And that is the difference between anarchist communism and collectivist anarchism. That's what the paragraph is talking about. Okay. All right. Last paragraph. There are unsurprisingly several traditions of individualist anarchism, one of them deriving from the conscious egoism of the German writer. Okay. There are unsurprisingly several traditions of individualist anarchism. Now there's another term. We have anarchist communism collectivist anarchism this is probably most likely the third form of anarchism that the passage is talking about there are unsurprisingly several traditions of individualist anarchism several traditions so again individualist individualist anarchism also has different types one of them derives from the conscious egoism of the german writer max turner and another one from a remarkable series of 19th century american figures who argued that in protecting our own autonomy and associating with others for common advantages, we are promoting the good of all. Now, don't get confused by this. Okay, this is in relation to what was discussed in the previous paragraph. See, we started by discussing communities, which is anarchist communism. Then it went to collectivist anarchism, where the, uh, the they started talking about individuals. So from communities, we moved to individuals. This is just extending that concept. So it's saying that there are several traditions of individualist anarchism. Okay. One derives from the German writer. Second derives from the American figures. But what do they say? They argued that protecting our own autonomy and associating with others for common advantages, we are promoting the good for the world. Again, the focus is on individual. Do you see that? Right. There are different traditions of individualist anarchism, but they kind of sort of like agree on this thing that Autonomy, which is nothing but concerned with individual, individual control is what autonomy is, right? Protecting our own autonomy and associating with others for common advantages, we're promoting the good for all. So it's okay to have individual autonomy, but at the same time, you associate with others for common advantages. So again, that is where the individual, the focus is on the individual, right? Again, different forms of individualist anarchism, but they kind of agree on this, that individual autonomy is, autonomy is okay. These thinkers, now when they say these thinkers, they're talking about individualist anarchists. These thinkers differed from free market liberals in their absolute mistrust of American capitalism and their emphasis on mutualism. Interesting statement. Understand it, right? If you're not used to this construction, it will confuse you. So slow down a little bit. These thinkers, which are individualist anarchists, differed from free market liberals. So they are different from free market liberals. How are they different? In their absolute mistrust of capitalism and their emphasis on mutualism. So basically what they're saying is that you have these individual anarchists, okay, who are different from free market liberals. And how are they different? Because free market liberals believe in capitalism and they don't emphasize on mutualism. Whereas individual anarchists don't believe in capitalism and they emphasize on mutualism. Understand that sentence. It's different from free market liberals in their absolute mistrust of American capitalism. So it means as individual anarchists don't believe in capitalism, free market liberals are okay with capitalism. Individual anarchists emphasize on mutualism, free market liberals don't do that. That is where the difference is. Okay, so they're highlighting the difference between these two philosophies. All right. Okay, I'll come, I'll answer the questions in a minute. I just want to summarize this paragraph, uh, passage, and then we'll, I'll answer your questions before we go to the questions. So, see, once you're done with this exercise, right, and you've taken these small, small notes, what you should do is take a few seconds 
to sort of understand the main idea of the paragraph. You don't have to spend a lot of time, but you can just sort of try to, in your brain, just try to understand what is this passage telling me. You've looked at paragraphs, you looked at the flow. Now try, try to understand what is this passage telling you. So see, at this point in time, you can decide to look at your notes if you want, right? Either you can take notes. See, the primary reason is we are taking notes for comprehension. But you can always come back and look at the notes and understand the main idea of the passage before moving to the questions. Okay, so let's look at this. What does it start? Now I'm looking at notes. It spoke about the origin of anarchy. It talked about Proudhon, how he changed it from negative to positive. Then it says anarchism is kind of related. It borrows from liberalism and socialism. Okay, then it talks about how did anarchism come into being? How did it rise? There were two reasons, not only difference between rich and poor, but also the negative outcome of French Revolution. That's how it came to be. Now, then it talks about French Revolution. Again, it expands on that. The outcome of French Revolution was negative because there was terror and there was emergence of a newly rich ruling caste and also Napoleon Bonaparte connected to the previous point. Then the next paragraph talks about Anarchists declared, now this was the declaration by anarchists, affirmation, right? That poor people were betrayed by the new rulers. They invested so much in the revolution. They lost lives. There was so much of damage, but they were betrayed by the new rulers because the new rulers started targeting them once they came into power. So that's why anarchists say that these poor people were betrayed by the um, new rulers. Okay. Then it goes on to talking about how anarchists consider state as their enemy. Okay. That's a very emphatic point there. Then it goes on to talking about difference of different types of anarchism. So anarchist communism, which talks about community control. It also talks about the difference between state socialism. Then it goes to your collectivist um, communism. Just one second. Sorry. Collectivist anarchism, right? Again, it's difference because one is focusing on community. Second is focusing on individual. And then it ends by talking about expanding on that individual idea and saying how individual anarchists is different from free market liberals. Okay. So if you look at the main idea of this passage, right, there is of course origin of anarchy, right? It talks about, of course, it's all about anarchy, right? That's very evident. So origin, then historically, how did it come to being? And then it talks about the different forms of anarchism, right? Communism, collectivist anarchism, and then finally individualist anarchism. That's the main idea of this passage. Okay. All right. I know I've taken quite some time to explain this, but I wanted to make sure you understand. Okay, great. Let's, let's uh, proceed. Let's look at the questions. Okay, let's try to solve these questions together. Now, one thing, remember, when you come down to questions, slow down. Okay, because obviously the cat is trying, will try to trick you with questions and options. So be very careful when you're reading the question, read each and every word slowly and read each and every word in the option slowly as well. Okay, question one, which one of the following best expresses the similarity between American individualist anarchists and free market liberals, as well as the difference between the former and the latter. Okay, so this question is asking you two things. It's basically talking about similarity between American individual anarchists and free market liberals, as well as the difference between them. So you have to pick an option that gives you both the similarity and the difference, right? Now, if you've read this passage carefully, you should get a trigger that the passage has spoken about this, right? So if you have read it carefully, if you have taken notes, you will have a map in your head. So you'll immediately know where to go and hunt for this information, right? So we know that somewhere towards the end, there was a comparison between American individualist anarchists and free market liberals, right? Let's look at that. We can reread it. So the last paragraph, right? Um, one second. Here they spoke about... Um, you have your individualist anarchists, right? And the comparison between them and free market liberals. Okay. So actually you'll have to read this entire paragraph if you haven't understood it, but this is where the answer is, right? This talks about the difference. So they say that these thinkers, which is individual anarchists differed from free market liberals in the absolute mistrust of capitalism and their emphasis on mutualism, right? We, we took a note for that as well. Okay, so let's look at an option which which basically summarizes that. Let's start with A. And and believe me, uh, by the way, you'll have to go through each option because the idea is to pick the best option. Even if you know the answer, and let's say if you've spotted this, please go through each option because you can always have a better option. 
right? And invariably in CAT, what happens is you'll end up with two options, which are very close and you'll have to pick which is the best one. So go through every option. Let's do that. Both uh, reject the regulatory power of the state, but the former and the latter. Okay, so what is former? Former is your individual anarchists. Okay, and latter is your free market liberals. If this is confusing you, you can always jot it down. Okay, because the options keep talking about former and latter. Both reject the regulatory power of the state, but the former favor a people state while the latter favors state intervention in markets. The latter favors state intervention in markets. Is there anywhere in the passage where it says that free market liberals favor state intervention in markets? There's no point like that. And you can go back and read it, right? You have the PDF, uh, you have the uh, click on that link and read it. There is no point like that where they say that free market liberals favor state intervention in markets, right? So this is a wrong, wrong, uh, wrong option. This can't be your correct answer. Let's remove that. Both prioritize individual autonomy, but the former also emphasize mutual dependence while the latter do not do so. Okay, there was a point about mutualism. If you remember, we'll go back. It says the former emphasizes mutual dependence while the latter does not do so. So individual anarchists emphasizes mutual dependence, whereas free market liberals does not do that and both prioritize individual autonomy. Okay, this looks like a likely option. Let's go back and check. Okay. What does it say? How do they differ? Uh, they differed from free market liberals in their absolute mistrust of capitalism and their emphasis on mutualism. So who emphasized on mutualism? Individualist anarchists. And they were different because liberals didn't emphasize on mutualism is what the option is telling you. Former also emphasize mutual dependence while the latter do not do so. So the difference part is correct here. But did both prioritize individual autonomy is what you need to confirm. Okay. Definitely individualist anarchists definitely prioritize individual autonomy. We know that. But did free market liberals also do that? Let's look at it. See, look at the way the paragraph is structured. Okay. The paragraph talks about individualist anarchism arguing that protecting our own autonomy and associating with others is all good. So it talks about individual autonomy. Then it goes on to say these thinkers differed from free market liberals in these two aspects. They differed from them in these aspects. They're specifically mentioning it. So that means you can infer that both were okay when it came to autonomy. It doesn't directly say that. This is an inference that you'll have to draw. Okay, this has to be based on your understanding. So because they're talking about, this is a part of the same paragraph, the, look at the flow. They talk about autonomy and then they talk about the difference between free market liberals. So we can infer that free market liberals were okay with individual autonomy. Okay, so that means your second answer is a very attractive answer. Let's hold on to it. But let's look at C and D as well. Both are sophisticated arguments for capitalism, but the former argue for the moral upright capitalism, while the lat latter argue that the market is the only morality. morality. Do both support capitalism? It clearly says that individualist anarchism is different because it doesn't support capitalism. Both do not support capitalism. So this is out. Both are founded on the moral principles of altruism. What is altruism? Altru altruism is all about charity, generosity. Are both founded on the moral principles of altruism? Does it talk about altruism anywhere within the context of both either individualist or free market liberals? No, absolutely not. So this is also ruled out. Your correct answer is B. Um, one question is, is it go back to, is it okay to go back to the passage to find the answers? Because it is usually said juggling back and forth is not advisable and one has not read the passage well if understood. Okay, good question. Um, good question. See, the thing is you have to read the passage first before going to the questions. Okay, so read the passage properly, right? Give it, give it your time, understand the passage and then go to the questions. It's okay to go back to confirm an answer. Right. But it's not OK to go back and reread chunks of passage again. When you have read it first, you should have a good understanding of the passage. But of course, questions are going to talk about specific portions of the passage. Right. Unless unless if it's like a central idea and stuff like that. So when you pick an option, you can always go back and confirm it. That's not like you're rereading the whole content. You've already understood the content. You're just confirming understanding. Right. What is not advisable is that when you're reading the passage for the first time, don't go back and forth. Don't read one line again and again. That means you're going too fast 
right? And you're not understanding the line. So depending on your speed, go slow, go according to your speed, read each and every line, understand it. Don't keep going back and forth in the first read is what the, what the advice is. Okay. All right. Can you read about liberals being individualists? Um, okay. See, you have to look at the structure, Chandravardhan. Uh, that's a, that's an interesting part in this question, right? See, look at the, look at the flow of this paragraph. Okay. It's an inference that you'll have to draw. It's not directly stated about the similarity being autonomy. It says individualist anarchism focuses on autonomy, right? That's the main point till they bring up free market liberals. Then they talk about these thinkers differed from free market liberals. So how did they differ? Individualist anarchists differed from free market liberals in two aspects, American capitalism and mutualism, right? So if they differed from them in two aspects, that means they would have been same on the other aspects, right? And the only other aspect that this paragraph is talking about is autonomy. So that's the inference we are drawing. We know the parameters on which they're different, but that those are the only parameters there on the different. The other parameters autonomy, that means you can infer they are the same. Okay. Okay. Great. In the interest of time, let's guys, uh, let's, let's uh, proceed. So, the author makes all of the following arguments in the passage except. Okay, now look at this question. Quickly pick your answer and then let's start. So be careful with this question. So makes all of the following arguments in the passage except. You have to basically pick an argument which is not made by the author. Right? Because it's saying makes all of the following arguments except. So pick an argument that was not made by author in the passage. Okay, understand that question carefully. Okay, so feel free to pick one answer. Let's just quickly go through the options. Okay, now we have to pick an argument which is not mentioned in the passage by the author, right? So basically out of four options, there will be three which are mentioned. One will not be mentioned, obviously, right? So let's look at that. Individualist anarchism is actually constituted of many streams, all of which focus on the autonomy of the individual. Now, is this an idea or is this an argument that the author makes in the passage? Individualist anarchism constituting of many streams, all of them focusing on the autonomy. You should get a trigger. Obviously, we have discussed individualist anarchism. You can go back quickly and you can confirm. So here it talks about there are unsurprisingly several traditions of individualist anarchism, several types of individualist anarchism. And it says one of them derives, second of them derives, but all of them agree, both of them agree that the focus is on autonomy. So it talks about two different traditions or two different types, one and another. Both of them argued that in protecting our own autonomy and associating with others is promoting the good for all. So we know that two forms of individualist anarchism did promote autonomy. Okay, so let's look at that option. Individualist anarchism is actually constituted of many streams, all of which focus on the autonomy of the individual, right? They've mentioned two, right? And they've, uh, they've mentioned how they focus on the autonomy of the individual. So this is definitely an idea which is discussed in the passage. Okay, let's look at B. The popular perception of anarchism as espousing lawlessness and violence comes from a mainstream mistrust of collectivism. There is definitely a mention of collectivism there. Okay, now what does this option say? Now espousing, right, what it means is that anarchism is promoting lawlessness and violence. Okay, so popular perception of anarchism as promoting lawlessness and violence comes from a mainstream mistrust of collectivism. So two points here. Does the passage say that anarchism espouses lawlessness and violence? No. And does that come from a mainstream mistrust of collectivism? There is collectivism mentioned, but there is no mention of mistrust of collectivism. Okay, so this is a likely answer. This is not an idea that has been discussed in the passage. Okay, so let's park that. For anarchists, the state is the enemy. Definitely, we have a point which clearly says that because all states apply violence and terror to maintain the control. Absolutely. It clearly says that the state is the enemy. So this is an idea which is discussed. The failure of the French Revolution was because of its betrayal by the new class of politicians who emerged from it. Now you can go back and check. It clearly says that that anarchists said that the poor were betrayed by the new class of politicians. And that's why the French Revolution failed. So this is also an idea. B is your correct answer. Okay. All right, folks, let's let's proceed. Let's go to question number three. 
According to the passage, what is the one idea that is common to all forms of anarchism? Okay, let's let's uh, think about this. Pick your answer. You have the PDF as well, and let's discuss it in a minute. Great, a lot of D's. Okay, all right, great. So let's let's look at that. According to the passage, what is the one idea that is common to all forms of anarchism? Remember, there are different forms of anarchism discussed. Okay, what does Delta say? They are all opposed to the centralization of power in the state. This is a very likely option because remember there is a sentence which clearly says anarchism considers state considers state to be an enemy, right? So we can infer that's a very emphatic statement. So we can infer that all of the forms of anarchism are opposite opposed to the centralization of power in the state. This is a very likely option, but we'll have to look at the other options as well before making our decision. There is no idea common to all forms of anarchism. That is why it is anarchic. Okay. Is this true? Is that why it is called anarchic? Not really. But but we'll look at that. They all focus on the primacy of the power of the individual. What does primacy means? Primacy means it comes from the word prime. So they all focus on the importance of the power of the individual. Are they focusing on the importance of the power of the individual? All forms? You have anarchist communism which talks about communities. Right. And even in the other individualist anarchism, it's not the focus is not on the power of the individual. They're saying it's okay to for an individual to have an auto, uh, autonomy. But communism, anarchist communism doesn't have individual at all. So this is wrong. They all derive from the work of Pierre Joseph Proudhon. It doesn't say that. Okay. So D is your correct answer. You guys are on the right track. Perfect. Let's go to solution four. Sorry, question four. Okay. This is an interesting question. The author believes that the new ruling class of politicians betrayed the principles of the French Revolution, but does not specify in what way, which is true. The author just says that anarchists declared that the politicians betrayed the principles of French Revolution. Politicians betrayed the poor people, but it does not specify in what way. In the context of the passage, which statement below is the likeliest explanation of the betrayal? Okay, now this is an inference that you'll have to draw. So understand that bit and draw this inference. What is the explanation? Why is the author saying um, or rather in what way did the betrayal happen is the is the question, right? So pick an option. Tell me answer and we'll discuss it. Great. So I'm getting alphas. Let's let's confirm that folks. Uh, all of you are saying, most. I mean, the answers that I got were all alphas. Let's see that. Um, so we are we have to specify in what way. Um, the ruling class of politicians betrayed the principles of the French Revolution. Okay. It says the new ruling class wrote to power on the strength of the workers' revolutionary anger, but then turned to oppress that very class. Okay. This, this seems, this seems, this makes sense, right? The new ruling class wrote to power on the strength of the workers' revolutionary anger. The workers were angry. That's why they grasped that chance, which came once in centuries to do a revolution at the cost of their own life and all of that. So the new ruling class wrote to power. So the workers were angry. They did a revolution and that resulted in a new ruling class. Okay. So the new ruling class came into being because of the strength of the workers revolutionary anger. But unfortunately, they turned to oppress that very class, which is why they feel betrayed. And the passage clearly mentions that. So this is a very likely option. Okay. You guys seem to be on the right track. Let's, uh, let's hold on to this. Let's look at option Bravo. The anarchists did not want a new ruling class, but were not politically strong enough to stop them. This part, the anarchists were not politically strong enough to stop them. The passage doesn't have any inference like that, right? This is not a valid inference you can make from the passage. It doesn't mention or allude to this at all. So this is wrong. The new ruling class was constituted mainly of anarchists who were against the destructive impact impact of the revolution on the market. The new ruling class was constituted mainly of anarchists. Would the anarchists ever become a part of the ruling class? They are against the state. They are against rulers. Right? So this is clearly not true. The new ruling class struck a deal with the old ruling class to share power between them. Irrelevant. There is no mention of this in the passage. So this is clearly the answer. And this explains in what way the, the folks were uh, betrayed. Right? Because they were oppressed. The new ruling class actually turned to oppress that very class. So that's why they felt betrayed. Okay, so absolutely right. Congratulations. You guys got the got the right answer. Let's look at question five. Okay, now in this question, folks, just remember it says of the following sets of concepts, identify the set that is conceptually closest to the concerns of the passage. So there are several concerns in the passage, right? 
we have to pick an option which is conceptually closest to the concerns of the passage. So basically pick an option that does a good job of summarizing the concerns of the passage is what you have to pick. Okay. Now remember one thing. Some students for some reason get confused that you have to look at the sequence here. There is no sequence. There is no one, two, three, four. Right? Don't think that's that's how it is structured. There is no sequence. All you have to do is pick a set that summarizes, that does a good job of summarizing the concerns of the passage correctly. That's what you have to pick. So I'm getting a few, uh, I'm getting a few deltas, which is D, and I'm getting some alphas as well. Okay. Understandable. I get it. I get why that's happening. Okay. So alphas and deltas is what I'm getting, right? Now, these are the two options that you guys have picked. Okay. Now, first of all, you guys are on the right track. Amazing. So these are the two closest answers, right? And I can totally understand why there is a confusion. Bravo and Charlie cannot be a correct answer simply because the passage is talking about anarchism. That's the main idea. So you need to pick an option that has anarchism. This doesn't have anarchism. This can't be the right answer. So this is, you can quickly eliminate. Now, in typically CAD, you'll have two options which you're left with and you'll have to decide which is the best option. Both might be correct. It's possible, but which is more correct? which is the better option is what you have to pick. Okay. For every question, right? Let's look at uh, the difference between alpha and uh, uh, delta. Alpha and delta both have anarchism and state. Okay. So that's the common element. How they're different is alpha talks about betrayal and power. Delta talks about individual and freedom. Okay. Now we have to pick based on this. Okay. If you look at a major chunk of the passage, which is the ending, right? If you go back, Let's go back. The last part. Okay. Once it's, it talks about anarchist communism, then talks about collectivist anarchism and the individualist anarchism. There is a lot of focus on the individual in this content. Would you agree? Right. So the last two paragraphs, which is almost one fourth of the passage talks about individual. And it also talks about freedom of the individual in owning what they need. So they're saying that individual autonomy is okay. Individualist anarchism says individual autonomy is okay. Right? So it's talking about freedom of the individual to own what they need. Right? So there is a lot of conversation around individual and freedom in a major chunk of your passage. Okay? And you have to summarize the concerns of the passage. So that is a likely answer. But let's try to rule out the other one to just be 100% sure about that. Okay. So this is a likely answer. We have decided that. What about betrayal and power? Okay. There is definitely talk about betrayal. It talks about the, we had a question on that as well, right? How the French revolution folks felt betrayed. And then there is power in the sense that the state has the power. Okay. Now, are these main points? Are these the main concerns? Betrayal was okay. Betrayal is mentioned, but it's mentioned about French revolution. That's how anarchism came into being. Okay. And power is what? Power resides with the state. So essentially, if you look at these two elements, they're quite similar. Power and state are quite similar because state has the complete power. Right. But the main parts, the main points of the passage are anarchism, state, and there is a major chunk on individual and freedom. That's why D is the right answer. So this is about elephant seals. All right. Yeah. Uh, there's one question which, I, which I'll answer. Uh, Kiran, can these type of passages come in IP mat? So Kiran, uh, these, this is a cat passage, right? But as uh, somebody pointed out before, these are useful for IP mat students as well, right? See, IP mat passages are a little less complex than cat passages. You can say one level below cat passages, right? But it's possible that you can see a similar passage in IP mat. The complexity might be a little lower. Okay, so that is the difference. So you can have a similar passage in IP mat as well. IP mat students should definitely attend these sessions because it's always good. The complexity is a little higher. So if you can solve this, IP mat will be very easy for you. Okay, all right. So definitely attend and, and then focus on this and solve, solve it together. Okay, let's look at elephant seals, folks. So hopefully you've read this already. Okay, let's read that. It's a very interesting passage about elephant seals. So please... Interest, curiosity, and uh, a lot of energy, right? Let's do that. Okay. In the late 1960s, while studying the northern elephant seal population, okay, along the coast of Mexico and California, Bernie LeBouf and his colleagues couldn't help but notice that the threat calls of males 
at some sites sounded different from those of males at other sites. That was the first time dialects were documented in a non-human mammal. Very interesting. Okay. So what does this talk about? Okay. It says that there was Bernie Lebouf, right? Um, who was studying the northern elephant seal population in Mexico and California. And he discovered that the threat calls of males at some sites sounded different from other sites. So the main point that they're making here is that threat calls of elephant seals were different in different sites, among sites. So they must have studied multiple sites along the coast of um, Mexico and California. And they saw that, okay, we're talking about elephant seal, right? Same animal, but it's the threat calls are different among different sites. So multiple sites, the threat calls of males are different. And that was the first time dialects were documented in a non-human mammal. It's a very interesting point, right? Humans, of course, we have different dialects, different languages. Within languages also, we have different dialects. But this was the first time where they discovered different dialects in a non-human mammal. Right? So that is the main point of the first paragraph. Now, all the northern elephant seals that exist today, one second, all the northern elephant seals that exist today are descendants of the small herd that survived on Isla Gudalup. Now, I'm, I'm butchering the proper noun, but it's basically a small island that they're talking about. So Isla is nothing but a short form of an island. So all the northern elephant seals that exist today are descendants of the small herd that survived on this island after the near extinction of the species in the 19th century. Interesting. So there was an extinction, near extinction. The species was going to be wiped out. But a small herd of these animals survived on this island. And all the northern elephant seals that exist today are descendants of them. So they're all coming from the small population that existed on that island. Okay. All right. Now, as that tiny population grew, northern elephant seals started to recolonize former breeding locations. Okay. It was precisely on the more recently colonized islands where Lebu found that the tempos of the male vocal displays showed stronger differences to the ones from Isla Gudalup, the founder colony. Okay, so what is the main idea here? They are talking about this island. Okay, and they're saying that the, the near, near extension when that happened, the small herd only survived. Northern elephant seals were only existing on this island. This was the only place that had northern elephant seals. And all of the northern elephant seals that we see today are descendants of uh, this. Because obviously this was the only population that existed when the extinction happened. Right? Now as this population, as this population started growing, okay, they started recolonizing former breeding locations. Now why is it recolonizing? Because obviously before the extinction, there was a huge population. So they were present in different breeding locations. Then the extinction happened. All the sites got wiped off except this small island. So once the population started growing, they started recolonizing former breeding locations. So they started spreading into different sites. So the former, their former breeding locations before the extinction, they started growing and spreading to these former sites. Okay. Now it says it was precisely on the more recently colonized islands where Lebu found a difference in the mating calls. So let's say for instance, this island, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they started recolonizing all these different sites. Okay. One by one. So in the recent ones, in the latest ones, this is where Lebu found that the male vocal displays were different from the Gudal. So remember, they have moved out from the island to different sites. Okay. And in the recent ones, they're saying that this is where the scientists found it, found differences between these sites and this island. Okay. Remember they originated from the founder colony was this island. Okay. That's the point of this paragraph. Let's move on. In order to test the reliability of these dialects over time, Lebouf and other researchers visited Ano Nuvo Island in California, the island where males showed the slowest pulse rate in their calls. Okay. Now, interesting. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to test the reliability of these dialects over time. They discovered that there was a dialect. Okay. But they wanted to make sure that the discovery is correct. So what they did was they tested the reliability of these dialects over time. Right. They took a time period and they tested if the dialects do exist or do they keep changing over this time period. Okay. This will become clear in the next sentence. So 
they uh, other researchers visited this island in california the island where males showed the slowest pulse rate in their calls every winter from 1968 to 1972 so from 1968 to 1972 every winter okay they visited this island to check if the dialects are changing or not because they wanted to check the reliability okay and it also says that this island had the slowest pulse rate in calls remember we know that different sites are showing different dialects okay we saw that in the previous paragraph this site is showing the slowest pulse rates so to check that they went every winter from 1968 to 1972 okay now what did they find what we found is that the pulse rate increased each year but it still remained relatively slow compared to the other colonies we had measured in the past so what does this mean right they have ano nuvo which is the island they visited this island every winter from 1968 to 72 they discovered that the population of these seals which were living in this island that pulse rate kept on increasing but still in spite of the increase they remained relatively slow compared to other sites remember there is a difference in sites okay so if you have other sites here there will be a difference in dialect so although anonivo was increasing every year they were still slow as compared to other sites that's what they discovered okay all right now at the individual level the pulse of the call stayed the same okay a male would maintain his vocal signature throughout his lifetime but the average pulse rate was changing now this is an interesting point make sure you understand this at the individual level now which level individual northern elephant seal level okay so an individual's level so if you take like let's say this time period 1968 to 72 you have individual seals okay now throughout this time period if you look at an individual level nothing changed in the individual the individual maintained the pulse of call so if you take one seal there was no change at an individual level but the average pulse rate was changing very interesting now it will require you to use a little bit of your analytical skills how is it possible the individual is not changing but the average pulse rate on that site is changing okay now it gives you the possible reason immigration could have been responsible for this increase as in the early 70s 43% of the males on ano nivo had come from southern rookeries that had a faster pulse rate so what's basically happening is you have these seals on ano nivo okay the individual is not changing but the average keeps on changing that means the entities the seals are changing so basically this is one part at this point in time these are the seals now some of them will die let's say and then there is immigration happening from other parts so there are seals which are entering from other sites so the set is changing remember the existing population of this island keeps changing because there is immigration happening so of course if you add new seals the average will keep changing so although the individual remains the same the average keeps changing because of immigration okay and they were increasing so they also said that the average the pulse rate kept on increasing right this is because they were coming from southern rookeries where these seals had a faster pulse rate don't forget the main point different sites have different dialects ano nuvo is the slowest there are southern rookeries which has a faster pulse rate now southern is the seals are immigrating from southern to ano nuvo and that's why the average is going up okay so the main point here is that immigration is causing the change in dialects i hope you got that right because the individual remains the same but the average keeps changing and it's immigration that's causing that change in average okay right let's proceed this led lebouf and his collaborator lewis to deduce that the dialects were perhaps a result of isolation over time after the breeding sites had been recolonized okay for instance the first settlers of ano nuvo could have had by chance calls with low pulse rates at other sites where the scientists found faster pulse rates the opposite would have happened seals with faster rates would have happened to arrive first now this is a little bit of a complex paragraph let's let's uh, spend a little bit extra time here to understand it what are they saying based on this what they saw right that the individual um, was not changing but the average kept on changing and they said that this is potentially due to immigration okay so based on this what they deduced is that the dialects 
that they saw the different dialects and different sites were perhaps a result of isolation over time after the breeding sites had been recolonized. Remember, they went from that island, Guda Loop, to different, they started recolonizing different sites. Okay, so they are deducing that the dialects are because of the isolation over time. Okay, and they give you an example. So Anno Nuvo probably has the slowest pulse rates because by chance, the seals that migrated to Anno Nuvo from the Gudaloop Island had low pulse rates. And other sites might have faster rates, again by chance, because the seals that they got had faster pulse rates. And they remained in isolation over a period of time. So because they remained in isolation, right, Anno Nuvo, Southern Rookeries, they remained in isolation. That's why they noticed a difference in dialects, is what they're saying. Okay, so the main point here is, according to the study, what they're saying is the isolation is what is causing the dialects to differ. Okay, let's just note it down according to the study. So the study says isolation is likely the reason for dialects. All right, okay, let's continue. As the population continued to expand and the islands kept on receiving immigrants from the original population. Okay, so population continues to expand and the different islands kept on receiving immigrants from the original population. Original population is the Gudaloop Island. The calls in all locations would have eventually regressed to the average pulse rate of the founder colony. In the decades that followed, scientists noticed that the geographical locations reported in 69 were not obvious anymore. Again, it will require a bit of analytical skills to understand this. See, we have already determined that uh, the, the study says the dialects were because of isolation. Right? Now, the dialects were because of isolation. But the next paragraph says that as the population continued to expand and the islands kept on receiving immigrants from the original population, the calls would have regressed to the average pulse rate of the founder colony. So you have the founder colony, okay, which has an average, which is different from the average that they're seeing in different sites. Okay, but as they kept, as these different sites kept on expanding, the average started becoming equal. So first there was difference because of isolation difference in dialects but the difference kept on decreasing because of immigration makes sense isolation is causing the difference but the immigration from the original founder colony is causing the difference to go down okay is what they are saying understand that so in the decades that followed scientists noticed that the geographical variations reported in 69 were not obvious anymore so there was clear variation because of isolation immigration started and those variations were not obvious anymore so here the main point is that immigration is causing dialects to disappear. Sorry, apologies for my bad writing. But the main point is isolation is the reason for dialects. Immigration is causing them to disappear is what I want you to understand from these paragraphs. Okay. Final one. In the early 2010s, while studying, so we have come from early 70s to early 2010s. So that was the past. This is more recent. While studying northern elephant seals on Anno Nuevo, same island, researcher Caroline, another Caroline Casey, noticed too that what Labouf had heard decades ago was not what she heard now. This is fine. Labouf was saying that there was difference in dialects due to isolation. That was in the 70s. Then the immigration started happening. So that difference disappeared, which is what Casey found. Okay, by performing more sophisticated statistical analysis on both sets of data, Casey and Labouf confirmed that dialects existed back then but had vanished. This is again sort of reiterating the point mentioned before because of immigration. Yet, there are other differences between the males from the late 1960s and the great great grandsons. Modern males exhibit more individual diversity and the calls are more complex. So, what Casey is saying is that the dialects did disappear. Okay, because of immigration. But what she's saying is modern males, the males that she found on Anno Nuvo in 2010, they exhibit more individual diversity and the calls are more complex than their 1970s descendants. Okay, so while 50 years ago, the drumming pattern was quite simple and the dialects denoted just a change in tempo, Casey explained that calls recorded today have complex structures, sometimes featuring doublets or triplets. So the main idea here is that the dialects disappeared Okay, so they were pretty much the same, 
But if you compare 1970 to 2010, right, X and Y, Y is more complex and this was simpler. Okay, all right. Now, if you look at the main idea of this passage, right, look at the flow. So it starts by, it's all about the northern elf, elephant seal population, obviously, right? So it, basically, the main idea here is, it talks about how there was a founder colony. Okay, they recolonized different locations. Initially, the dialects were the same, uh, sorry, were different because of isolation. That's what Labouf noticed, that they were different. So this was the first time they were documented in a non-human mammal. But that difference slowly started disappearing because of immigration. And in the end, when Casey did her study, she said that the dialects have disappeared, which is fine. But the 2010 seals exhibited more complex patterns than the seals in 1970, is what the passage is saying. All right. Which of the one, which one of the following conditions, if true, okay, which one of the following conditions, if true, could have ensured that male northern elephant seal dialects did not disappear? Interesting question. Okay. Now, by this time, you should have understood that there were dialects before when Labouf studied and then the dialects disappeared. Okay. Why did the dialects disappear? Because of immigration. Is that correct? Okay. Now, what this question is asking you is, which of the following conditions if true? So, assume that these options are true. Which one of them could have ensured that the male northern elephant seal dialects did not disappear? So they disappeared, but you have to pick an option which could have ensured that these dialects don't disappear. Okay, look at the options, pick a, uh, pick your answer and then we'll discuss it. Okay, all right. So let's discuss this folks. So I have seen, um, let me look at the answers. So there is Delta, Alpha and Bravo. Okay, all right. So Delta seems to be the common one, but there is one uh, one answer which said alpha and a couple of answers that said bravo. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, which one of the following conditions, if true, could have ensured that male northern elephant seal dialects did not disappear? Now, what we understand is that immigration is the reason why the dialects disappeared. Everybody should be clear, clear about this. Otherwise, you can go back and read the passage and figure that out. That's an important point here. Okay, and... Uh, Immigration happened from where? So we had the Gudaloop Island, right? I'm sure I'm pronouncing this wrong. This was the founder colony. Okay. And uh, you had new sites which were recolonized. And eventually what happened is the original population from the founder colony immigrated to these sites, kept on immigrating. And that's why at the end, the differences started to disappear. So these sites started looking more, started sounding more and more like the founder colony because they were getting seals from there. So the average sort of started becoming the same as the founder colony and then the dialects disappeared is what we've understood. Okay. All right. Let's look at alpha. Okay. You have to pick an option which could have ensured that the dialects did not disappear. They have disappeared. We have to pick an option that would have ensured that it did not disappear. Okay. Besides this island, there was one more surviving colony with the same average male called Tempo from which no migration took place. Okay. Now, number one, the dialects disappeared because of migration. Okay. Right. Now we have to say that if we have to choose an option where the dialects did not disappear. So immigration is causing the dialects to disappear. If there is no immigration, then chances are that the dialects will not disappear. Okay. So this seems like an attractive option. Okay. No migration. But think about this. Besides Isla Gudalup, there was one more surviving colony with the same average male called, uh, called Tempo as this island from which no migration takes place. Great. So the second colony didn't have any migration. But what about this founder colony? The migration still happened from there. The option is just saying that we have an additional colony with the same average male called Tempo, but no migration happened from the second colony. Great. Fantastic. But the migration is still happening from this island and migration is what's causing the dialects to disappear. So therefore, even if there's a second colony, it won't have an influence because Gudaluk will still continuing migrating. So the dialects are still going to disappear. 
That is why A is not the correct answer. Let's look at Bravo. The call tempo of individual male seals in host colonies changed to match the average call tempo of immigrant male seals. Okay. All right. Now let's understand this. The call tempo of individual male seals in host colonies changed to match the average call tempo of immigrant male seals. Immigration was happening from the founder colony to the different sites. Now, when they're saying host colonies, they mean this part. Okay. So as the immigration is happening, they're saying the call tempo of individual male seals in the host colonies is changing to match the average of this. Do you get this? Is this clear folks? The individual male seals in the host colonies here, they are changing to match the average of the immigrant call seals. Okay. So this is a likely option. Let's hold on to it. Uh, C is besides this island, there was one more founder colony with the same average from which male seals migrated to various other colonies. Again, if you increase the migration, then the disappearance is more likely. So this can't be the correct option. Okay. The call tempo of individual, individual immigrant male seals changed to match the average tempo of resident male seals in the host colony. So what is this saying? Okay. The call tempo of individual immigrant male seals. So what is immigrating? is changing to match the average tempo of resident male seals. Remember one thing. They are different. Okay. One, two, three, four, five is different from the founder colony. Because you are having immigration here, it's changing because they're becoming similar to the founder colony. Now, if the call tempo of immigrants change to match the resident male seals, will it disappear? The immigrant seals are adapting to the newer sites, not the other way around. So option Delta is telling you the immigrant seals adapt to the newer sites. So the immigrant seals change, not the host colonies. And if the immigrant seals change and adapt to the newer colonies, that means the newer colonies will retain their difference. And if they retain their difference, the dialects will not disappear. Okay, so B and D, Bravo and Delta are essentially talking about the opposite. The correct answer is Delta. Bravo is just there to confuse. So let's go to question number two. All of the following can be inferred from Leboeuf's study as described in the passage except that. Okay, so you have to draw inferences from Leboeuf's study. Okay, so we'll go back and look at what Leboeuf's study was. But it's saying all of the following can be inferred from the study except. So you have to pick an option that cannot be inferred from, the, from Leboeuf's study. Okay, and this should answer Nikunj's question as well. So Nikunj was asking, um, you know, why is the dialects, why are the dialects occurring because of isolation was the question. So let's look at what Leboeuf's study was all about. Okay, let's focus on that. See, this is where they talk about Leboeuf's study, right? That's what they did. So in order to test the reliability of these dialects over time, Leboeuf and other researchers visited this island where the where there were the slowest pulse rates every winter from 1968 to 1972. Okay. And what they found was the pulse rates increased, but it still remained relatively slow. Okay. So this was basically the study what they did, right? So 1968 to 1972 is when they did the study. All right. And then in the next paragraph, they talk about the, the deductions that they made. Okay. So what they're saying is that Leboeuf and his collaborator deduced that the dialects were perhaps a result of the isolation. So Nikunj, this point is clearly stated in the paragraph. Okay. So what Leboeuf deduced was based on a study that dialects were perhaps a result of isolation over time. So your question is, why did this happen? It's mentioned in the passage directly. Okay, so what Leboeuf is saying is that yes, the dialects happened. There were differences between different sites and this was because of isolation. This is the deduction that he's making in this study. Okay, right. That's the summary. Now let's look at the question. So all of the following can be inferred from the study as described in the passage except. Let's look at option alpha. Changes in population and immigration. Okay had no effect on the call pulse rate of individual male northern elephant seals. Changes in population and migration had no effect on the call pulse rate of individual male northern elephant seals. Can you infer this from a study? 
what was Leboeuf saying? There was one point of individual versus average, if you remember that. Okay, let's go back and check that. In the next paragraph says, at the individual level, the pulse of the call stayed the same, but the average kept changing. That's what it was. From 1968 to 1972, when they went back every winter, they saw that in the individual level, it's not changing, but the average is changing. And the average is changing because of immigration. Okay, let's look at that option again. Changes in population and migration had no effect on the call pulse rate of individual. Did the individual change? No, the average changed. Okay, so this is something that you can infer from the study. Okay, so this is fine, but we're looking for something that you can't infer. The influx of new northern elephant seals into Anno Nevo Island would have soon made the calls pulse rate of its male seals exceed that those of Gudaloop. So read this carefully. They're talking about the migration. Remember the migration happened from this island to different sites. And the migration is what caused the dialects to disappear. Why? Because the average of these recolonized st sites started matching the island. That's why the dialects disappear. So what is the sentence saying? The new northern elephant seals into Anonivo from this island made the calls pulse rate of its male seals exceed that those of Gudalup. Now think about this. If the northern male seals that are migrating from this island to the newer sites, if they cause the pulse rate to go beyond this island, how will the dialects disappear? The dialects disappeared because the average started matching this of the island. Okay, if the migration is causing this value to go up to an extent where it's exceeding this island, that means the average will not match. And if it doesn't match, the dialects will not disappear. So you can't infer that from the passage. So this is a likely answer. Let's look at C and D quickly. Male northern elephant seals might not have exhibited dialects had they not become nearly extinct in the uh, 19th century. Is this true? Male northern elephant seals might not have exhibited dialects had they not become nearly extinct in the 19th century. Now there is a particular sentence. Let's read that. Okay. This one. This led Lebouf and his collaborator Lewis to deduce that the dialects were perhaps a result of isolation over time. Okay. So the dialects happened because of the isolation. And the isolation happened because of the recolonization. Okay. So now, now think about this. This is again a little complicated. The dialects happened because of isolation. Why did the isolation happen? The isolation happened because of recolonization. And the recolonization happened because of the near extinction. So the near extinction wouldn't have happened. The dialects might not have happened is what the option is saying. Okay, so you can infer this. And finally, Delta, the average call pulse rate of male northern elephant seals at Anno Nevo increased from early 1970s till the disappearance of dialects. This is exactly what happened. Okay, Anno Nevo had the lowest pulse rate. It kept on increasing before because of the immigration. But once it started matching the Gudaloop, the dialects disappeared. This is what Delta is telling you. So you can infer this. You can't infer B. So Bravo is the correct answer. It's a little complicated. You have to some, spend some time later to, to sort of completely understand it. Okay, so that's question two. Let's go to question three. All right, now, which one of the following best sums up the overall history of transformation of male northern elephant seal calls? So you have to sum up the overall history. Remember, there are different aspects of the history that we have uh, understood. Um, dialects appearing because of isolation, dialects then disappearing because of migration. So keep that in mind and then choose an option that sums up the overall history. Okay, all right. Now let's look at Delta. Okay, the calls have transformed from transformed from exhibiting simple composition, less individual variety, and great regional variety to complex, great individual variety, and less regional variety. Interesting. Okay, now first of all, there is this relationship between simple and complex. Did the calls go from simple to complex or complex to simple? 
it's clearly simple to complex. And if you read the last paragraph, you'll understand. The study that Casey did in 2010, she uh, concluded that the calls have gotten complex as compared to 1970. So they definitely went from simple to complex is what this answer is telling you. Okay. Less individual variety to great individual variety. Okay. Let's look at what Casey was telling us. She said modern males exhibit more individual diversity. Okay. So individual diversity is nothing but individual variety. More individual diversity as compared to 1970. So this also is correct. They went from less individual variety to great individual variety. Great regional variety to less regional variety. This is absolutely correct because remember the migration happened and they that caused the differences to slowly disappear. Now the differences were between different regions. So initially there was great regional variety where every region was exhibiting a different dialect. But because of immigration, it went down less. It kept on becoming lesser and lesser. So definitely the regional variety reduced with immigration. So this is your correct answer. Okay. Now there are three other options here. If you read them, you will understand that they're either saying the opposite or something totally different. Okay. I think we're good to go. Delta is the correct answer. It seems like you guys are clear with that. Let's go to question four. The final question. From the passage, it can be inferred that the call pulse rate of male northern elephant seals in the southern rookeries was faster. Okay. From the passage, it can be inferred that the call pulse rate of northern elephant seals in the southern rookeries. Southern rookeries is definitely mentioned in the passage. How can you infer that their pulse rate was faster is the question. So if you go back to southern rookeries, Yeah, this is where this paragraph talks about Southern Rookeries. So have a look at this paragraph and choose the option and tell me what is the correct option. Okay, you can look at this paragraph in your PDFs. I'll just go back to that question. Okay, great. Let's look at this option. So you guys have chosen Alpha and Bravo. Okay, all right. Now, before we go to this question, uh, let's go back and read that uh, specific content again. Okay, and the question is that uh, the call pulse rate of northern elephant seals in the southern rookies was faster. How can you infer this statement? So you'll have to draw this from the existing information in the passage. There is definitely a mention of southern rookeries, right? Um, what does it say? Okay. It said at the individual level, the pulse of the call stayed the same. Okay. A male would maintain his vocal signature throughout his lifetime. We know that the individual remained the same. The average kept on increasing or changing, but the average pulse rate was changing. Okay. Immigration could have been responsible for this increase. So in Anno Nuvo, the average increased. We know that from 1968 to 1972. And we're saying immigration could have been responsible for this increase. As in the early 1970s, 43% of the males on Anno Nuvo had come from southern rookeries. So we know that immigration was happening. Okay. So immigration was happening into Anno Nuvo. Okay. Where they were coming, uh, where were they coming from? They were coming from southern rookeries. This is what this paragraph says. Now, 43% of the males on Anon Uwa had come from southern rookeries that had a faster pulse rate. So there was immigration that was happening from southern rookeries to Anon Uwa, and this caused the average to go up in Anon Uwa. Okay. So we know that that's happening because of the immigration of southern rookeries. Now, what can you infer from this statement? If the immigration from southern rookeries to Anno Novo is causing the average to go up, it is happening because of the seals that are coming from southern rookeries. And the extension of that is the southern rookeries seals probably had a faster pulse rate to begin with. So when they migrated, they started bringing up the average of Anonuvo up. Okay, that is one thing. And also what you have to remember is that in the next paragraph, right, it says that the dialects happened because of a result of isolation over time. The first settlers of Anonuvo could have had by chance calls with low pulse rates. And at other sites, 
where the scientists found faster pulse rates, the opposite could have happened. So they're saying that by chance, Anno Nuvo got seals with low pulse rates and other sites could have gotten seals with faster pulse rates. So it's possible that southern rookeries could have gotten seals with pulse faster pulse rates by chance. Okay, so that is an inference that you can draw. If you look at your final question, if you look at Bravo, it says the male northern elephant seals of this island with faster calls pulse rates might have been the original settlers of the southern rookeries. This is pretty clear. They are immigrating from there and they're bringing the average up. So it's possible that the original settlers from, from southern rookeries, which had a faster pulse rate. So that's why B is your correct answer. Alpha is not your correct answer because it just mentions the migration, right? That is not enough to sort of draw that inference. You need that extra information that's available in Bravo. That's why Bravo is the right answer and Alpha is not.